Exploring Europa. In this video, you will learn some facts about Europa and what is our vision for it in the future. So let's get to know this Jovian moon Europa a little better. Europa is a frozen, icy world, which is the sixth closest moon of Jupiter, and it's the smallest of the Galilean moons discovered by Galileo in 1610. Even though it is the smallest of the Galilean moons, Europa is still the sixth largest of the 181 moons in the solar system. Jupiter's magnetic field disrupts the space around Europa and ends up creating a special type of magnetic field within Europa with a deep layer of some electrically conductive fluid beneath the surface. Based on Europa's icy composition, Scientists think the most likely material to create this magnetic signature is a global ocean of salty water. And this magnetic field result is still the best evidence we have for the existence of an ocean on Europa. This ocean can contain twice as much water as Earth's oceans combined. Europa may be the most promising place in our solar system to find present-day environments suitable for some form of life beyond Earth. This sparked a hypothetical scenario in science fiction that, what if alien life were thriving in an ocean beneath the icy surface of Jupiter's moon Europa? The notion pulled Europa out of obscurity and into the limelight, where it has remained, stoking the imaginations of people both within and outside the science community who fantasize about humans discovering life beyond Earth. That fantasy, however, may be grounded in reality. Before we go further into the video, don't forget to share and subscribe. Also, click on the bell icon to get the notification about new video uploads. Europa is the same age as Jupiter, around 4.5 billion years, and it is named after a Phoenician noblewoman who became Queen of Crete in Greek mythology. The continent of Europe was named after the same noblewomen. Europa is one of the brightest objects in the solar system, with an albedo, the light reflectivity of 0.64, one of the highest of all moons. This reflectivity suggests a young and active surface to Europa of somewhere between 20 and 180 million years. With an equatorial diameter of 1,940 miles, or 3,100 kilometers, Europa is about 90% the size of Earth's moon. So if we replaced our moon with Europa, it would appear roughly the same size in the sky as our moon does, but brighter, much, much brighter. Europa's surface is made of water ice, so it reflects 5.5 times the sunlight than our moon does. Europa has a weak oxygen atmosphere, which is most likely because of charged particles from the sun hitting water molecules on its surface. This breaks those molecules into oxygen and hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen escapes the surface of Europa, but the oxygen is left over leaving a tenuous oxygen-based atmosphere. Radiation levels on the surface of Europa are around 540 rem per day, a dose which would cause severe illness and death in a human being exposed for just one day. Like Io, this radiation is the result of solar radiation and energetic particles produced by Jupiter's very strong magnetic field. It takes 3.5 days for Europa to orbit Jupiter. Europa is tidally locked by gravity to Jupiter, so the same hemisphere of the Moon always faces the planet, similar to most of the moons in our solar system.
Europa orbits Jupiter at about 417,000 miles or 671,000 kilometers from the planet, which itself orbits the Sun at a distance of roughly 500 million miles or 780 million kilometers. Because of the distance, sunlight is about 25 times fainter at Jupiter and Europa than at Earth. Because Europa's orbit is elliptical, its distance from Jupiter varies, and the Moon's near side feels Jupiter's gravity more strongly than its far side. The magnitude of this difference changes as Europa orbits, creating tides that stretch and relax the Moon's surface. Flexing from the tides likely creates the Moon's surface fractures. Europa is the smoothest known object in the solar system, lacking large-scale features such as mountains and huge craters. Europa's equator is covered in icy spikes called penitents, which may be up to 15 meters high, due to direct overhead sunlight on the equator, causing the ice to sublime, forming vertical cracks. Europa's most striking surface features are, a series of dark streaks crisscrossed by long, linear fractures, cracks, ridges, and bands, which cover the entire globe. Long, linear fractures are often only 1 to 2 kilometers wide, but can extend for thousands of kilometers across Europa's surface. Some of these fractures have built up into ridges hundreds of meters tall, while others appear to have pulled apart into wide bands of multiple parallel fractures. Galileo spacecraft found regions called chaos terrain, where broken, blocky landscapes were covered in mysterious reddish material. This reddish-brown material whose composition is not known for certain, but likely contains salts and sulfur compounds that have been mixed with the water ice and modified by radiation. This surface composition may hold clues to the Moon's potential as a habitable world. The Moon's ice shell is probably 10 to 15 miles, or 15 to 25 kilometers thick, sits atop a salty ocean of liquid water. Unlike Earth's rocky crust, Europa's surface is almost entirely rock-hard water ice, with a small fraction of briny material, and perhaps organics mixed in. The global ocean of salty liquid water that lies beneath Europa's icy crust is estimated to be 40 to 100 miles or 60 to 150 kilometers deep and contains more than twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined. Europa has an iron metallic core. Its rocky interior lies between the Moon's core and the ocean layer. As Europa flexes due to the gravity of Jupiter, ocean water might seep into the uppermost portion of the rocky layer to be heated and interact chemically with the rock, loading the water with minerals and organic carbon-containing compounds as it flows back into the bottom of the ocean through cracks or fissures. If Europa's exterior is being deformed by forces acting on its ice shell, what scientists refer to as being tectonically active, then ocean material may be able to reach the moon's surface and vice versa. Research suggests that thin plumes of water are being ejected 100 miles or 160 kilometers above Europa's surface. This plumes of water vapor that may be vented into space could come from within the icy crust itself. A model outlines a process for brine, or salt-enriched water, moving around within the moon's shell and eventually forming pockets of water, even more concentrated with salt, that could erupt. The volcanic or hydrothermal activity on the seafloor of Europa also could supply the ocean with building blocks for life and with materials that could serve as food for simple organisms. Life as we know it seems to have three main requirements, liquid water, the appropriate chemical elements, and an energy source. Astrobiologists, scientists who study the origin, evolution, and future of life in the universe, believe Europa has abundant water and the right chemical elements, but an energy source on Europa has been difficult to confirm.
On Earth, life forms have been found thriving near subterranean volcanoes, deep sea vents, and other extreme environments. These extremophile life forms give scientists clues about how life may be able to survive beneath Europa's ice shell. A black smoker in the Atlantic Ocean. Driven by geothermal energy. This and other types of hydrothermal vents create chemical disequilibria that can provide energy sources for life. The energy provided by tidal forces drives active geological processes within Europa's interior, just as they do to a far more obvious degree on its sister moon Io. Although Europa, like the Earth, may possess an internal energy source from radioactive decay, the energy generated by tidal flexing would be several orders of magnitude greater than any radiological source. Life on Europa could exist clustered around hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor, or below the ocean floor, where endoliths are known to inhabit on Earth. Alternatively, it could exist clinging to the lower surface of Europa's ice layer much like algae and bacteria in Earth's polar regions, or float freely in Europa's ocean. If Europa's ocean is too cold, biological processes similar to those known on Earth could not take place. If it is too salty, only extreme halophiles could survive in that environment. Future Exploration of Europa Five spacecraft have visited Europa up close, and scientists do regular checkups on the tiny moon with the powerful Hubble Space Telescope. Europa was first observed up close during the Jupiter flybys of Pioneer 10. Pioneer 11. Voyager 1. And Voyager 2. Most of what we know about Europa comes from several years of orbital observations by the Galileo spacecraft. NASA is building a future mission called Europa Clipper, and ESA is developing a mission called JUICE, Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. Europa Clipper is crafted with one overarching goal, to determine if Europa harbors conditions suitable for life. Europa Clipper will carry a suite of advanced instruments to explore the Jovian moon. The mission is scheduled to launch in October 2024 during a 21-day launch window and is expected to arrive in April 2030. The spacecraft will use gravity assists from Mars in February 2025 and Earth in December 2026, a mega trajectory. If we eventually find some form of life at Europa, it may look like microbes, or maybe something more complex than we can imagine. If it can be demonstrated that life formed independently in two places around the same star, it would then be reasonable to suspect that life springs up in the universe fairly easily once the necessary ingredients are present, and that life might be found throughout our galaxy and the universe. If life were found at Europa, how might it change your view of the cosmos and our place in it? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. And click on the bell icon to get the notification about new video uploads. Thanks for watching.